You're listening to the Parent Pod Podcast by Jimbury Play and Music with Adonica Shaw, a weekly conversation about early childhood development topics for parents with children ages zero to five. While the content of this show is meant to be informative, it is not meant to replace the guidance of your physician, therapist, or pediatrician. Hello, and welcome to the first episode of the Parenting Pod podcast by Jim Marie Play and Music. I'm your host, Adonica Shaw, and today I am joined by our, for- our first guest, Cassie Wishelhouse of Jim Marie Play and Music. Cassie, welcome to the show. Thanks so much. Thanks for having me. Of course. So this is our inaugural episode, and we want to give people a, a little bit of a taste of what to expect in episodes to come, but then also to give them a Jimbery Play and Music welcome. That said, I want you to introduce yourself to our audience and tell them what it is that you do for Jimbery Play and Music. Of course. So uh, thanks so much again for having me, Adonica. My name is Cassie Wishelhouse. And I work at Jimbury Play and Music in the curriculum design and training department. So at Jimbury Play and Music, uh, from the 1970s through to today, we have designed all of our own classes and curriculum. And I am just the lucky person who gets to stand on the shoulders of those who came before me in designing Um, really exciting play classes for children and parents to uh, enjoy together in our uh, state-of-the-art play centers across the world. That's awesome. I think uh, for parents like myself, when I hear curriculum design, that (laughs) sounds incredibly, (laughs) incredibly wonderful. It it sounds like something that um, requires a lot of education, a lot of thought, and um, of course, a lot of research. And so I guess one of the first questions I'd like to ask you is what exactly goes into designing a curriculum? For example, for infants that might be between zero and maybe 10 months, what are some of the things that you would consider when putting together a curriculum for that age group? Yeah, absolutely. Well, our team definitely comes from uh, an eclectic background and a lot of education. And like I said, we have um, lots of things that were designed from many different brilliant brains, and then we just put it all together. So my background is in education. I have a degree and um, some work towards a master's in education. Um, And then I also come from a dance background and a yoga background, and that really influences what we design for the kids that we um, have in our classes because at Jimbury Play and Music, one of the main philosophies is that a moving child is a learning child. So all of our curriculum uh, is designed to get kids moving, to get them uh, invested in the play cognitively, socially, and emotionally, and physically. So for our infant classes, those zero to 10 month olds, uh, you would think, oh, what am I supposed to do with, you know, these little guys, they're (laughs) barely moving around. But um, it's actually one of my favorite ages that we work on because there's actually so much learning happening. Every experience is a new experience for an infant. So we can do things that might seem repetitive or simple to the adult brain, but are just firing neurons and creating huge learnings for these little guys that are in our class. So when looking at a class designed for an infant, uh, we're taking into account, of course, what's age appropriate for them. So things that are going to really spark where they are today. So it's important that the class doesn't have elements that are too challenging, but we also want to stretch their knowledge of the world around them. Another huge piece of the curriculum design at Jimbury Play and Music is parent involvement. So whether it is an infant class or a two-year-old class, our parents are heavily involved in the curriculum, which I think really sets us apart from other uh, play classes or uh, I guess our competitors, you might say, because we really have embedded in our curriculum a role for the parent. Because we believe also that uh, you are your your child's first teacher. Um, A parent is the first one that a child builds trust with, that they 
want to have experiences with. And so you're the best person to teach them things. And we're just there to provide some fun activities for you to do, but you're the one giving them the play and the experience that they're going to take with them for a lifetime of learning. That's wonderful. I think, um, when you're talking about the parent involvement aspect of it, I feel like there's so many different programs now, but everything is so hands off, you know, yeah. I think by pivoting back to, um, I hate to say where things used to be. If you look back in the seventies and eighties, there weren't yeah. as many programs offered. And so for that reason, there was a higher concentration of really, really high quality, um, service providers, companies, organizations that provide more one-on-one -on -one parent interactive uh, type uh, play environments, education environments, whereas mm -hmm. in this last decade or two, we've seen more of a pivot towards independent learning. And there's, you know, there's nothing wrong with that, but it is good to see um, that highlighting the relationship between parent and child is Hate to say, make a, co a comeback of sorts, but it's certainly good to see it at the forefront, you know, today in 2020. But yeah, absolutely. Thing, Sorry, you know, one ahead. thing I do want to know is what is it, for example, if you're a first time parent, right? And to your, your earlier point, um, you are your child's first teacher. And so if you are a first time mama, first time dad or caregiver, what are some things that a parent can do? to arm themselves with the information that they need to help their child to move along developmentally? Is it um, maybe looking at certain blogs? Is it certain um, research that they should do on their own? Or is there anything that they can also do to arm themselves with the information to be their child's best advocate? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think that's a great question. And I think what I have found in my own research and being in this field um, is that there is so much information out there that it's kind of hard to filter what's going to be best for you. And I think really the best advice for a new mom or new caregiver is that you need to find a philosophy that fits with your personality. And then when you do have your little one, that fits with their personality as well. Because in early childhood education, there's so many different approaches to parenting, to preschool philosophies, um, to ways to approach uh, how to child rear, <laughs> using an old fashioned term. Yes. So um, it's really about finding what you're comfortable with. I think a lot of times people feel overwhelmed with, oh my gosh, if I'm not doing that, then I'm not a good parent or if we're not teaching this, then they're going to fall behind. And I think one of the most important things for parents to know is kids have an innate drive to thrive. So this idea of falling behind from zero to five is pretty impossible. These kids are a typical normal developing child is going to learn. There's not much you could do to prevent that from happening. No matter what philosophy you choose to follow, um, they're going to they're gonna figure stuff out. That is what we do as human beings is we have an innate drive to thrive. Just think about, you know, why would a child move from crawling to walking, right? Because they want to figure out a new way to move around. Um, you know, you see these super confident crawlers who can get around the whole house crawling up on stuff and all of a sudden now they're walking and taking two steps and falling down and taking two steps and falling down. Well, why wouldn't they just go back to crawling, right? It's because they have an instinctual drive to keep going. So as a parent, I would say to relax a little bit, <laughs> to, to do your research, but to find, again, something that resonates with you and who you are as a person if you're a super laid back parent or human if you're really love schedules if you want um you know to have boundaries and strict rules in your house it's all just about what's going to make you comfortable and then finding out who your kid is and what their personality is and then finding that match that's awesome um one of the things i think that's uh interesting that's come about as of late is, uh, to your earlier point, trying to find uh, a balance, I think, as a parent between 
understanding that what you're doing is enough. And to your, your point, you know, children by nature are going to learn. There's nothing you're really going to do to stop them from learning. They, right. <laughs> they want to thrive. They want to move forward. And so um, in terms of, uh, for example, if a parent, first time parent walks into a class, perhaps that you're leading, um, what is a piece of advice that you would give them about how they should manage their own emotions as they see the child development, maybe something um, to put them at ease. You know, what is one piece of advice you would give to a new Jimbery playing music parent? Yeah, absolutely. I think one of the best things that I like to share with parents, and again, something that is part of the Jimbery playing music philosophy, is to try really hard not to compare your child to the other children in the room. It's super easy to do, and um, we've discussed this before about how, you know, we're super, uh, as a new parent, aware of milestones and wanting to make sure that we're meeting them. But milestones happen, you know, it's not just a linear line. Things happen really they progress super fast and then other things don't. So you might have a super early walker, but they're not talking a lot yet. It's because kids aren't great multitaskers. <laughs> they are focused on one thing at a time and they're incredible at being present. So if you see another baby who you go, oh my gosh, that baby is nine months old and they, are, they have 25 words. My baby's not saying anything. Well, just try to focus on what your kid is doing and what they are developing right now and just try to avoid the comparedness. So um, that's just really, I would say, of a first-time mom walking into a Jimbery playing music class, it's so fun to see the little kids interacting with each other and seeing it's so cute when you see a baby, see another baby for the first time. You're like, there's more of me. This is crazy. <laughs> um, but definitely just knowing that each kid develops at their own pace and at their own time and that it's important not to compare um, where one child is compared to where your is and to not worry about it. Like, you know, you go to your pediatrician appointments, you hit those big milestones, but at the end of the day, everything's going to even out. You're going to have some kids who learn things faster than others. Um, but I would say just mostly not to stress about it. I see a lot of parents trying to stress about not walking yet. And while it's a great milestone, um, it's okay. There's late, there's kids who start walking at 18 months old and you know what? They're running with their friends when they're four. They're at the same place. Uh, it doesn't really affect them once they get to that place. Well, that is a good place to end. Um, I think that your expertise is certainly so important uh, for parents, whether or not it's, you know, a first child, because, you know, even um, with children of my own, for example, every child was different. So yeah. approaching parenting and my strategy, child one, changed so dramatically after I had number two and then even number two is different than number one. And then when the third one came along, he just completely rocked my world and it was a completely different ball game. And so <laughs> I think um, whether it's your first child or your third, your fourth, your fifth, uh, you have to go into it with the mindset of that child is following their own developmental path and journey. And of course, you know, if you have more experience after having more children, you can um, guide in so far as, you know what to do, but each child and each daily experience is um, completely unique to them. And so I want to thank you so much for coming on the show and for giving us your time. Um, if you would like to reach Cassie, you can reach her at Cassie. T tell us where we can find you if they have more questions for you. Yeah, sure. Um, you can definitely reach me on my uh, email at Jimbery Play Music. So it's actually cassie.holman at jimboglobal.com. Um, also, it's totally fine to find me on Facebook. Uh, it's just Cassie Holman on Facebook. You can find me there too. Well, thank you so much for your time, Cassie. And until next time, we look forward to speaking with you more on the Parenting Pod podcast. Thanks so much for having me. Have a great day. To learn more about this week's episode or the content discussed in the episode, be sure to follow Jimboree Play and Music on Facebook.